Danes začenjamo z žalostno vestjo. Prejšnji teden se je pri 61 letih poslovil kostumograf Emil Cerar alias Rasim Softič. Na punk sceni znan kot Fernandel, ki je večkrat nastopil tudi pred kamero. Leta 1988 je na tednu domačega filma, danes znanem kot Festival slovenskega filma, prejel nagrado za debitanta leta za film Remington v režiji Damjana Kozoleta. Leta 2017 pa je na Festivalu slovenskega filma skupaj s Poloncov Valentinčič prejel nagrado Vesna za najboljšo kostumografijo za film Družinica v režiji Jana Cvitkoviča. Kot igralec je nastopil v filmih kot sta Kozoletova stereotip in porno film. Prav zdaj pa naj bi zaigral tudi v filmu Hotel Alkohol, ki ga je sredi septembra začel snemati Cvitkovič. Kot kostumograf je sodeloval še pri filmih kot so Deklica s frnikulami, Delo osvobaja, Instalacija ljubezni, Lovac oblakov, Nahrani me z besedami, Zoran, Moj nečak idiot, Adria Blus, Drevo, Šiška Deluks, Igram sem, Ne pozabi dihati, Kapa in drugih. Kot punker je bil prisoten na številnih koncertih, tako doma kot v širši regiji. In je za sabo pustil neizbrisen spomin. Jaz iščem nekaj novega, nekaj, kar ni še noben sestavil in to bom našel. To bom našel. Oče me, Tico. Moj brat je šel v Italijo in se je nekaj ujavljati. Vseti let te ni poklicil, zdaj pa rad pomoč. Kaj pa ti veš, kaj je normalno? Še 20 let ne živiš pri nas. Daj povej mi, prosim, kako si ti predstavljaš, da bo Ana pazila na mamo? Ne, jaz ne moram. Deset let jih nisem videla. Dementna je, pojma nimam, kako se s takim človekom dela, ne. Jaz sem Veronika. Jaz sem pa Irina. Tvoja mama sploh ve, kdo sem. Mislim, a ve, da sem tvoja žena. Kdo si ti? In kaj je delaš v moji hiši? Mama nič ne vpliva na njo, kaj je s tabo, umir se. Ne, nič se ne bom pomirila. Veronika se ne obnaša tako, kot bi se morala, sliš A si videl od Roberta Sobo? Mio fratelo je konvento, da je poter rekonstruire la scrittura di Gesù. Me se to ne zdi normalno, ne? Da se nekdo deset let ukvarja s Kristusovo pisavo, pa? Glej, kaj sem najdel. Račun od gostilne, kjer je jedel. Si, mi je rekordo. Črkava vam barbone. Kaj pravi? Barbone? Govoril je o nekem klošarju in tega morba najti. O Robertova Sobo? Ma, nismo še našli Roberta, pa... Vidvej. Kaj pa je? Veronika! Robert! Ostajamo v domačih logih, v izoli se bo ta teden odvil že drugi ulični filmski festival, ki pa se zaradi slabe vremenske napovedi ni začel včeraj, ampak se bo šele v petek. In ob tej priložnosti sem seveda obiskala Mefa in ga povprašala o letošnjem dogajanju. Torej, že drugi ulični filmski festival nas čaka. Kako je v bistvu prišlo do prvega lani? Ja, do prvega je prišlo tako, da smo imeli par filmov tukaj, ki jih nišče ni videl, sem dokumentarne filmi, pa nekaj tudi, pa smo rekli, idemo jih prikazati tukaj, ne, potem smo pa gotovi, smo rekli, Marko, zakaj bi sam kar tako nekaj vrteli, idemo narediti, da bo to imelo eno obliko, ne, spomeni smo se, kdo so, kdo so ustvarjavci tukaj iz našega mesta, ne, in smo dobili Palčiča, kot režiserja, ki je priznanega že, ki je posnel na par igranih filmov, tudi in tega dva celovečerna, in smo mi, celovečerna kratka filma, in smo en ga v teh prikazali tukaj, potem smo ugotovili, da imamo, da je Boris Benčic, kar je tudi snemo, tudi snemo filme, smo brali naš en gov film, potem smo se spomnili Konija Steinbacherja, animatorja, ki je v ki ima v bistvu starosta slovenske animacije filmske in smo vzeli njegove filme tako in kar nekaj nastavlja ena zbirka zanimivih filmov, ki smo jih gledali tukaj pet dni, pet dni in ker so se vsi imeli fajn, so rekli, bom, to moramo narediti še drugo leto. Sploh pa potem, ko smo pa ugotovili, da so da so začeli ljudje pisati, ko so pisali razna priporočila, recimo za ministrstva in to se rekel, sem sodeloval tudi na uličnem filmskem festivalu, smo rekel, o, pravle, mi smo da tudi neka inštitucija tudi, ne. No in tako je potem nastavil ta drugi festival, drugi festival je pa malo drugačen od prvega, to, kot pa nismo šli iskati naših, pa se lokalno omejevati, ne. 
Ampak smo rekli, da gremo iskati probati najti filme, dokumentarne, predvsem dokumentarne filme, ki jih morda ne poznajo, ki niso videli ljudje še. Dva smo dobili, ki jih še niso videli in si se smo zelo veseli, da bomo prvič v Sloveniji predstavili dokumentarni film Igorja Gala. To je znan igravc jugoslovanski, mislim, pa bom drugače on je Hrvat, oziroma, mislim, je Hrvat, ja, posnev bi vsemo je vse filme za hladnika, recimo, ne, Boštjana, pa Železni križ, tudi križec je tudi snemo tukaj, znan mi, on je prav zvezda bil, on je posnev dokumentarni film o opatijskem filmskem festivalu, to je jugoslovanski festival jugoslovanskega filma, In posnev o tem, kjer se je končal, da je pač s tem, ko je bilo konec festivala v Puli, je bilo tudi konec Jugoslavije. Oziroma, ko je bilo konec Jugoslavije, je bilo tudi konec festivala tistega to pravega. In treba vedeti, Polski festival je to bil velik festival, veš, te so hodile velike zvezde, to je bilo na ravni, skoraj na ravni Kana, Benetki in to. In on je samo to povedal, da pač takrat, ko je bilo konec Jugoslavije, tudi ta festival je postavil lokalni, regionalni festival. In je želel ga predstaviti v Puli in ga niso sprejeli, da bi ga tam predstavili. In ga je uspel samo pokazati v Puli v enem majhni kino dvorani. In zdaj drugič ga bo predstavil tukaj pri nas v ulici, na uličnem festivalu, prvič v Sloveniji, tudi en teden pred festivalom slovenskega filma. Poleg njega pa imamo še en perfektni film o tranziciji v drugih krajih, ki so, mislim, o tem, kako je tranzicija nastajala v Srbiji. Govori o tovarni sredkorja, ki so jo, katera lasniki živi v bistvu v Egiptu ki so pa Srbi, ne, v tisto, in to, in teh, teh, kako je zginila tovarna sladkorja. No, potem pa smo, potem je pride še film od Gregorja Baumana o panku, oziroma na slovi je 100 decibelov, je, mislim, tak fin, fin dokumentarc, o, mislim, o prvi, o prvi slovenski pankovski skupini, edini, ki še vedno ostraja, in do zbak, in ki ga je zavrtel v Berlinu, na festivalu, ampak ne na vnem berlinska festivala, pač pa na festivalu punk filma v Berlinu. No in potem pa še, tukaj pa moram priznati, malo egoistično smo vzeti tudi film od film Rada Likona o tem pokrov sveta, ki smo ga sicer že videli tudi na televiziji, pa tudi v kino Odeon, ampak je ker je rado moj stari prijatelj iz leta 68, še naprej. Tisto, in se mi je zdelo, ker smo enkrat predstavili ta njegov film v postojni, smo rekli, da imamo še enkrat ga tukaj predstaviti, skupaj z Lenarčišem, pa da tudi on pove nekaj. To nikoli ni preveč govoriti o ekologiji in o varovanju tega planeta. Tako da, to bo ta program vkratko prevzeti. Moral bi biti festival zdaj v tem tednu od 8. do 11. ker pa je napovedano grozno vreme zdaj. Smo ga zamakali, tako da smo lovili lepo vreme in zdaj imamo 11. začne prvi film o 100 decibelov, se pravi, Baumana. Potem pa podeljek, torek, sreda, pa ostali trije filmi se zvrstijo, ko je napovedano lepo vreme, sonce in toplo. In to je pravo, za festival mora biti tako. Sicer pa kam postavite platno? Je platno tukaj za tabo sicer? Ne, platno je platno. Tam tista, tam tista stena imamo tako veliko platno, ki jo postavimo tam. Potem pa je, tukaj pa damo stole za občinstvo, prijatelj 50, 60 ljudi. Vse imamo vzvočene, imamo jaz doma v kuhini, ga postavimo od zunej, tako te pravo in je, vse funkcionira, mislim, pomaga nam, moram reči, Centr za kulturo, šport in prireditve z projektorjem, takim kvalitetnim, res kvalitetnim projektorjem. Potem, ko bomo po projekcijah, bomo šli pa v galerijo, tukaj zraven, tukaj bo spet stoli postavljeni, tukaj bo čas prostor za pogovor o filmu, In potem bo šli hmeni v kuhnjo, tam bo pa pojedina. Torej, bojo vsi ustvarjalci filmov tudi prisotni na projekcijah? 
Ja, praktično vsi. Edino ta iz Beograda režiser na Boker ima daleč. Mi ima daleč prije za en večer, samo sem, ne. Mi pač žal ne mora, mi nimamo nobene dotacije nikogar, mi to delamo vse tako. Zastojno oziroma zlastnega žepa. Rečem in bo, ne smo tudi, pa ne samo mi, vsi, tudi ulica, konc konca prespali bojo prespali bojo v prirobiju, ki ima prazno stanovanje tukaj, v, mislim, z kuhov nekaj nam bo pripravil za pojest tam iz Bujola, ne, tako, in skratko, mislim, tako malo med sabo pomagamo in je pa li vsega za dosti. Po kakšnem ključu pa si oziroma ste izbrali filme? Ja, to, kot je bil, to, kot je bil ključ, v bistvu poznanstva, rečem tako. Bauman je, Gregor Bauman je doskrat tukaj, on je prije več, kot sem, na mi napolnil Jukebox, ne napolnil, Jukebox je dal, to je najpomembnejša plošča, se pravi single, so od Luča Dale, Pjaca Grande, in jo je prinesel, jo je prinesel iz Bolonije, ne, potem, in zato, in je poklicil, je rekel, ne, zakaj ne bi predstavljali mojega filma tam, ne, in bi se mogel reči, ne, ne, tisto. No, potem je v Dušan Milavec, scenograf, ta naš nagrajeni, in to naprej, on ima poznanstvo v Belgrado, ker je dosti, kot je gostoval slovenskimi filmi v Belgrado, in je, in on se, on se je dogovoril za, on se je dogovoril za ta, za, za film o tovarni Sladkorja, tam pri njih. Potem je v Igor Galo, smo se pogovarjali tudi preko z Reno Urbičevo, ki bo gostila. Vsak film bo imel namreč enega svojega gostitelja, ki bo pravil, recimo, Reno Urbičeva bo z Igorjem Galotom, ki se poznato, so prijatelji in tako naprej. Potem v film o 100 decibelov bo gostitel Boris Bradač, ki ima vse njihove tudi prve ploščo in tako naprej. Potem je pride za radovana likona, sem imel dva frenda od 68, kot sem povedal, ne, tako je nastalo to, ne, no, no, in v, in za, kaj, v drugo so povedal vse, ne, v glavnem, šli smo po teh, po teh vezah, ki jih poznamo, ker je zato, da ne kompliciramo, pa veš, pa dovolenja, pa producenti, kaj reče, v vsem če dati, ne, vsi filmi pridejo sem brezplačno, zavrteli se bodo brezplačno, stopnine ni, tisto, tle je čisti užitek, pogledati film na malo večjem platno kot na televiziji. Ponovno pa se vračamo v Dvorano Akademije za gledališče, radio, film in televizijo, saj se je septembra tam oglasila Biržit Stermöze, danska režiserka, ki se je izobraževala v Združenih državah Amerike, kjer je tudi preživela potem 14 let vsega skupaj. No, njeni kratki filmi so bili nagrajeni in predvajeni na festivalih, kot so Sundance, New Directors, New Films, Berlin, Rotterdam in mnogih drugih. Njen debitanski celovečerni igrani film Soba 304 pa je mednarodno premijero doživ na festivalu v Karlovih Varih, kjer so ga tudi nagradili. Bila je tudi soscenaristka filma Idealist, ki ga je režirala Kristina Rosendal. Leta 2015 pa je režirala tri epizode serije Norskov, ki je nastala v okviru danske televizije. No njen drugi celovečerec, Darling, drama, ki se odvija v danskem kraljevem baletu, pa je premijero doživel v jeseni 2017 oziroma na BFI Londonskem filmskem festivalu. Dejnika Kirkik, kot njeno ime izgovarja Biržit Stermöze, pa je bila strani Danske filmske akademije in Združenja danskih filmskih kritikov, za ta film nominirana za najboljšo igravko. Kot protagonistka je nastopila tudi v filmu Kamino, ki smo si ga kot enega od dveh ogledali v Ljubljanju, v drugem več prihodnič. No, gre pa za intimno zgodbo o hčerki in očetu, ki živita v povsem drugih svetovih in imata povsem drugačne poglede na svet, ampak zaradi materine poslednje želje odideta na skupno romanje v Španijo na slavni Kamino de Santiago. Biržit Stermöze nam je razložila, kako je prišla do ideje za ta film. I did a film called Darling which was about a ballet dancer. It took place in the classical ballet world. And um, it was about uh, a ballet dancer who gets injured. So it was sort of about, you know, what happens to you when you lose, you know, if you're like really passionate about one thing and you lose the ability to do it, like, who are you? That's what it's about. You know, what do you do with yourself? You know, and do you, you know, 
do you take your own life or do you, you know, how do you survive? And, you know, in, in this film, her relationship falls apart. And I'm just saying all this to say it's, it's a pretty grim film. And I did it with, a, with Danica, the actress who's in this film. She also played the lead in that film. And, um, and we had a lot of fun off camera and everything in front of the camera was really heavy. And all my other films that I've done are really heavy. And I thought, I want to do something funny. You know, like I want to do something where you can actually have a little fun in front of the camera. So I sort of set out and I'm not, I'm not known as a comedic director. And I did notice you, I didn't sit here the whole time, but you guys didn't laugh a whole lot. In Denmark, they laugh at me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but humor doesn't travel so well, maybe. But, but you know, I, I just wanted to, um, to do something that was a serious topic, but, but to try, you know, as a director to try and see what, what would humor do for me, you know, and, and could I do it? It was also a challenge, like, could I actually do something that, you know, the acting style with comedy is different, the tone, the music, which we will get to, you know, it, 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 there's so many elements that if you want to move into, I mean, this is not a comedy, I would say it's a, a horrible term, dramedy. You know, I hate that term so much. But, you know, we know what it means, right? It fits. It fits, yeah. So so I wanted to do something that was quite serious, but I wanted to enter the serious topic via humor, rather than sort of just go head on with the with the seriousness. So that was so it was like a personal desire and it actually came from when I was in film school, I had a teacher who said Birgitta, you you know you like to laugh a lot. Why are you always making such serious films? You know, and I, it really stuck with me because I thought, see, as a point, I do like to laugh a lot, and I like to be around people, and I like to joke. You know, I think, and I thought, why is it that it has to be so dour on screen all the time? So, so that's sort of that. And then I had always, you know, uh, I have a good relationship with my father, but my father is a bit pompous, like this guy. He's not failed in his life. He's a, he was, now he's old and, you know, his wife has forbidden him to do anything public now. But, you know, he was quite a known theologian in Denmark and, and kind of in his youth was known. So he wasn't failed the way this guy was, but he was pompous the way this guy was. He wasn't mean the way this guy was, but, but he was full of himself or is full of himself, you know, quite up his own ass, so to speak. You know, so, and, you know, I always wanted to do, you know, a lot of things where I thought he's really hilarious, actually. So I wanted to do something that sort of was about this daughter-father relationship, you know, where they're both really hilarious. You know, like I also thought I had periods in my life where I was an adult, but I acted like a child, you know, like, and I think it's very typical. So I kind of wanted to make a film about this, you know, like how do we grow up and how do we deal with these difficult parents? I mean, I have, you know, when I've had bigger screenings, sometimes I've said, this is somebody who put their hand up who has no issue with their parents. Nobody puts their hand up, you know. Everybody has an issue with their parents. You know, it's very, it's a very universal topic. And and I actually thought there's never been, you know, there's been some father-son films in Denmark, but there's never been a father-daughter. And I do believe that, you know, the, for women, the relationship to their father is supremely important. You know, just for the forming of identity, for how they see themselves, for how they think oh, men are going to look at them later in life. But, you know, just there's a lot of sort of self-worth and maturing connected to your relationship with your father. You know, and and she didn't really get what she needed from her father. So she is kind of a grown child. So it's also about her trying under these circumstances to mature. And then it's also just about grieving, you know, actually. Which I didn't set out to make a film about grieving, but it did become a film about grieving. So that's how it came about. And, you know, just to finish, then we won't talk anymore about that, but just to finish this autobiographic... Am I talking too fast? No, okay. This autobi... You guys are smart here. So <laughs> this autobiographical um, uh, element, you know, it, it's... It's a little bit like, you know, I've taken certain, I've just cherry picked in my own sort of baggage and then I've taken other things. So, you know, I'm not dyslexic. I did really well in school. 
I was able to do everything academically that I was supposed to. But my brother was dyslexic and he was really good at sports. So, you know, I think, you know, they're family, family patterns that are sort of woven into the story. Uh, my mother was certainly not an atheist. She owned a bar. She divorced my father. You know, it's not autobiographical in so many ways. She's also still alive. You know, she didn't die. You know, but 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 I think there's some mechanisms and and some elements that I kind of used when I thought it was fun to use and separated myself from them when I felt like it. Film je bil predvajen v sklopu festivala Audio Forum, ki se je med drugim ukvarjal tudi s filmskim zvokom. Za ta film je namreč glasbo ustvaril slovenski harmonikar, klavijaturist in skladatelj Janez Dovč. Mogoče se ga spomnite iz domače folk zasedbe Terra Folk, v kateri je igral harmoniko in kontrabas, nastopal pa je še z glasbeno skupino Jara Raja in pa tudi kot solist. Je pa tudi ustanovitelj in umetniški vodja festivala Godi Bodi in lastnik glasbene založbe Celinka. It's really a uh, interesting story how it happened so this collaboration uh, I mean I I did some movies before I did also some some international movies uh one Irish one one Czech uh but this was the first time that it was not a Slovenian uh, co-production actually no no <coughs> no Slovenian money is in the in the, is in the movie and the, like such a direct call and direct contact i feel really honored and yeah and then the journey started and yeah i i usually i start very 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 rationally with you know with uh, okay what should be a, a sound palette what are the instruments what what is the echo of the land where the thing is happening uh and then at one point then then i just use those rationally picked elements and 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 start to to make music more uh, intuitively uh, and to to react to the picture or to the to, to, to the story and uh, yeah this is how how my process is and i i have to i have to point it out that uh, it was really special because it was it was not planned from the beginning that I will also appear <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> uh, that was an idea that came up along yeah, the way. Yeah, it was a really spontaneous <laughs> idea. Uh, like, what are you doing next week on Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> it was that kind of idea. Uh, and uh, it really, it really, um, it was really nice for me to, to, to be on the set, to, to, to get the vibe. I also played, uh, we, we actually had to choose which accordion visually uh, we will we will use in, in the movie. So I, I brought uh, more of them and when the, the crew uh, had uh, like a lunch time. I know, I have a beautiful little video. Of it. <laughs> I took accordion and played some, some music there and then yeah, we, 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 we chose, uh, we, we chose uh, the, the, the accordion uh, and yeah, it was a nice connection. Za film Camino so uporabili tudi prav poseben instrument. Then this idea, there is, uh, okay, cello is very important and there is another instrument that is really also where in almost all the, all the cues. Uh, it's called a ronroco and it's very a special instrument. Actually, there is a, a, the whole story how I uh, used, uh, we were <laughs> talking about that uh, before, how I used my global uh, connections <laughs> that we imported, that we found uh, Ron Rocco in Buenos Aires and uh, that uh, a friend of mine was just traveling to Europe. So uh, it was like um, impossible to find it here in, in Slovenia. Uh, we found one in, Cer in Cerknica, but it was just a souvenir type of it, so impossible to play. Uh, and then, yeah, then uh, I bought uh, Ron Rocco in Buenos Aires and got it here. And Robbie Pickle, who is another great studio musician, and is playing all the plucked instruments, uh, not just in this score, but the other scores I, I, I did, uh, got it like home for a few days. He said, okay, uh, after a few days, 
my my hand is not in really good now. <laughs> it is, it's really, but I will do it uh, because I, I did some demos and sketches on, on virtual, uh, like sampled version of it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a bigger version of Charango. So you 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 play it like um, you play you play it like Charango, but uh, it's one it's one octave lower or something like that. And it's really a uh, expressive instrument. I mean, I did, I did, I, I combine a lot uh, live instruments, like uh, live instruments played by real musicians and, uh, and uh, synthesized or uh, computer uh, tools and uh, effects and everything. So yeah, I was using it for soundscapes, for shimmers, for atmospheres and also for this but i mean this are arpeggiated things i mean it was really for me also a beautiful uh, beautiful new instrument that i i really uh, enjoyed i don't remember really where the idea come from 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 i think side, you though? i think you i think you made the mistake of playing sending something that had a little bit of it yeah and i kept something. i remember many weeks i kept saying well what about that sound and you're like <laughs> well i have this other thing because i think you knew like it was really not you're like it's a little complicated and there i think the cultural communication was maybe a little it was it you was know this, i kept uh, saying i want that and you're like well how about and i was like well, what about that how about you know and I was like, <laughs> yeah so, so uh, i think i insisted a bit because I like the sound of it. Probably you you are getting to know uh, Brigitte now also. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's uh, it was. I think I was like that. It was nice. Toliko o glasbi, za naprej pa še par napovedi. Prihodnič se bomo podrobne posvetili prihajajočemu festivalu slovenskega filma in že devetem kinotripu, festivalu, ki ga mladi prirejajo za mlade. Ne pozabimo pa, da se v tem tednu odvija tudi festival Mesto žensk, ki v spredje potiska ženske umetnice na vseh umetniških področjih in eno od teh je seveda tudi film. V kinodvoru se bo tako predvajalo kar nekaj filmov, v petek tudi film tunizijske režiserke Kater Benhanja, ki bo tako doživel slovensko premjero in gre za, citiram, počasi tlečo študijo družinske travme in intimno popotovanje polno upanja, upora, sestrske ljubezni ter medgeneracijskega prenosa trpljenja in nasilja. Konec citata. V film heda bišen haul na hki, hkete bnet Olfa. Olfa anda arba bnet هذي كلا مصيبة لا أني من نكرة الطفلة وكنت ما نحبش ما حبيتش نجيب حتى الطفلة الزوز الصغار آية وتيسير مزالوا عايشين معاها والزوز الكبار تلاهم الذيب باش تتعرفوا على الزوز ممثلات اللي باش يمثلوا أدوار أخواتكم الكبار أنا يا Tohle má kino kýv, kdo má kýk. Kdy lepší trofran, kdyby mu chlíne máme nefej. Sladit na ale lanceři a ty ano. Mrtěh má rád. Mrtěh v rásek. Kdy ty vůbec nemáš míš na ale rád. Na rychlý v dárk el asfalt. وأكثر إنسان مش باش نسامحك طول حياتي. إنه كل حاجة باش نعيشوها هي صارت. ونتوما برشا في الجروح نتاعنا. ونكرك نكرك نكرك. نجم القصو؟ اللي فهمته من الفيلم اللي مش تكون يكون دوري كما دور الروس في فيلم تيتانيك. حبيت بدلي تشدد هي مش تحكي في حكاية فاتت. هم ممثلين اخرين اللي هم مش يمثلوا الواقع اللي متاع القصه هذيك روحي والدم كيف ما يرجع الفرطه طول النار اللي تحرقوا كيف ما يرجع الفلاح للارض اللي تعرقوا كيف ما يرجع الملاح للبحر اللي غرقوا نرجع لك حاير ونهين يا Hvala za pozornost in se vidimo spet čez en teden v sredo ob 20. na Megafon TV. Čau.